and here in the studio to help unpack this controversy, we have Shoshana Keats Jaskol from the Chochmat Nashim movement and Rabbi Dov Halbatel uh, from uh, former advisor to Israeli Chief Rabbi Israel Lau. Rabbi Halbatel, I want to ask you first: Do you support taking Israel back to the Bronze Age? Not at all. Not at all. It's terrifying the way it's, it's stated. I think it uh, characterizes more the extreme right wing, almost fascist, like Smotrich and his friend around, but not the real ultra orthodox. We have been there. I mean that we have been in a lot of coalitions. The ultra orthodox. It was. It never occurred that somebody stated that he wanted a theocracy here in Israel. It's the first time that somebody declares it. And I mean, perhaps if we just try to make things clearer for our foreign audience, the, the difference between the ultra-Orthodox and the national religious movement, that maybe the ultra-Orthodox do want more of uh, Israeli law to be based yeah. on halacha, Jewish law, whereas the national religious really want to transform the character of the state? Is yeah, that the difference? No, they, I, they, they are strange, the, those uh, religious Zionists. They are, they are fascist. They are... Uh, very, fascists? Yeah. That's a very strong word. That's right. Why fascists? Why fascists? Do you have Smotrich and you have the uh, Kahana people there like Ben Gvir and, and Struk and in others. It's, 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 a, it's a fascism. It's, it's a, you know, and, and it's typical for them to be fundamentalists, to, to open the Bible and to say that the complete Israel is Syria and Lebanon. You know, and it's true. Syria and Lebanon in the, in the promise, they, they, it's Israel. Let us tomorrow morning come and you know, and get in Syria and Lebanon. Those are those fundamental people. But uh, we, we, are not, we are not so. We well, been, I, I mean, we'll, so we'll drill down into that, that fascinating difference with the ultra-Orthodox community. Shoshana, do you agree with this uh, characteristic of, of the national religious movement as being fascistic? I think that I would never say that the religious nationalist movement is a fascist movement. Uh, is it possible to say that there are a few fascists in the national religious movement? It's possible to say that. Well, we're talking I, specifically about the, the leader of one of those movements. But the leader, what does that mean, the leader? I mean, leaders change. We have another another round of elections, and maybe we'll have another round of elections. I feel, I, I don't like to, just like I wouldn't say that all Haredim are, all ultra-Orthodox are extreme, are extremists, I wouldn't say that all national religious are no, fascists. No, not everyone, but when you have a look at the leaders of the National Religious Party, the National Union, uh, the Jewish Home Party, who have said that Smotrich would be a perfectly qualified justice minister, uh, what do you make of the demand to turn Israel into a halachic theocratic and state? First of all, it's a ridiculous statement to make, because halacha is not geared towards uh, governing a state. Halacha deals with ritual, deals with damages, it deals with sacrifices. Uh, it doesn't deal with governing a state. Because so it would need adaptations to it. Yes, it would need adaptations. Day. And what a beautiful thing for religious people like us to say there are wonderful values in the Torah. The Torah talks about justice, it talks about uh, women, w uh, widows, and orphans, it talks about environmentalism and animal rights. There's a, a a world of wealth in Torah. So I would say, that my response would be, let's bring in Torah values to Jewish law. By the way, it's all it, what in Israeli to bring, law. To bring only, in Torah values. Right. So first of all, you should just know, or our viewers should know, that absolutely Israel brings in um, values of Jewish law, Torah law, within the laws. It, it, it Obviously, it goes into a lot of different um, spaces. But what does it mean for me to bring Torah into Israel? It would mean men and women, scholars, social workers, people who see how these things play out. How can we bring in Torah values that talk about justice, that talk about truth, not corruption? And I'm sorry, but the ultra-Orthodox parties are not free of corruption. Sorry, how, how, how are justice and truth and non-corruption different from universal principles of, of liberal democracy? I'm oh, trying to no. understand what are these religious principles you want to introduce into, into Israeli democracy? Oh. What do I want to introduce? I want to introduce the fact that when a woman goes into a, into a court and she tries to get a divorce, that she's heard as much as the man is heard, that it's not completely um, skewed against her like it is currently in the Beit Din. That's not halakha. Right? That is not Jewish law. Jewish law does not say that a woman should have to be extorted for her get. Rabbi Halatov, do you, do you agree with this uh, characterization that actually Torah values means taking a more women-friendly, perhaps a feminist attitude towards these issues? <laughs> it's terrible to hear it. It, it. it never was. You know, the, the, halakha, the halakha respects, the Jewish tradition respects the woman like nobody else respects them. True, Maybe, but it's not in the Beidin. It doesn't come out. No, that, the, the issue, the debate now is not, not the Beidin. I have a lot to say about it. I have also, so do I. No, no, that's not the issue here. We are talking much broader. 
the, the Alaha has to say about uh, government issues, about questions of uh, how to deal a state and everything. But Alha talks on those in, in this meaning only for the messianic age, you know, for the apocalyptic future. We are so not talking agree. today, uh, now. So and just, just to clarify, I, I, not, I don't agree with her. No, I, I just want to, to, to has a lot to say on the question of state and government. Sure. But it has to be a, a combined. It can't be only halakha. Halakha doesn't deal with things like bankruptcy and corporations or stock markets. Uh, it, it just doesn't. You can't just have a halakhic state without dealing with the modern world. And I think that's of, where you and I will, course, will differ. Of course. Of course. It, it, will, it will go together with democracy, of course. That's, it's not a question. But the only Rabbi question... Hathal, do I understand the difference is this, that, that you would support the creation of a, of a halachic state, you just think that that should happen after the Messiah comes, whereas the national religious movement thinks it should happen before? Is that the difference? Everybody prays every day for this messianic age. Everybody. She also prays, I assume. Well, not everybody. Yeah, and you can almost. And, and, you, and, you, and you pray. For what, what you pray... There are you, others who exist. Hello. <laughs> yeah. You pray for, you know, for the messianic age. You pray for the, for the David Amelech and all those things. But, that but do, do I understand... But, but, but talking do I, do about understand it, the it's difference. terrifying. But Rabbi, do, do I understand the difference that the dispute correctly within religious society, that the national religious movement wants Israel to move towards a theocracy now, and that's you want that right, to happen after right. the Messiah? That's terrifying. They are terrifying. It's terrible to hear it. They are fascists. I don't agree with her. The party is fascist. And being fascist meaning being fundamentals and being taking the Bible and, and implement it today and tomorrow. But at the same terrible. time, Rabbi Halbertel, I mean, a Pew Research Center study from 2016 uh, showed that actually 89% uh, of the ultra-Orthodox public in Israel would support halachic values over democratic values if there were a clash between the two. Is that's, that also that's fascistic? That's right. No, no. If, for example, if, for example, I think you will agree with it. If, for example, the, the, the government will tell me tomorrow that you, we, I am not allowed to keep Shabbat, do I have to obey this law? No, what do you, what no, do you that, think? But, but that is what not do a question you think of, about no, but that it. is not a question of, of imposing halacha when it comes against no. democracy. The question would That's be question. when the demo, if, if, the, if the democratic public wants one thing, but religious law says they must do something else. Like, for example, like public right. transport, which we don't have no, on Shabbat, despite I, I, the fact a majority of the Israeli public would like there to be buses on Saturday. That's not a problem because I, I don't. Well, it want, is for those who want no, public transport. No, no, I don't want to impose my values on others. I don't want. But the point is that according to opinion polls, 89% of the ultra-Orthodox public do. Is that problematic no, that, as well? No, that's in this meaning. It's in, it, the, when it clashes, it clashes when it comes to say that they will take me to the army and force me to go to the army. That's, that's a clash. And I will not obey the law. Which the ancient the, Israelites certainly no, no, did. No, no, it's, it's, it's or, or, or not to, you know, not to, not to obey the Shabbat, not to, not to keep Shabbat. I will not obey the law, such a law. If it, I, I don't think it will come to that. Shoshana? It will not come yes. to uh, What do you make of, of, of this? I, I think that Rabbi Habertal is taking a, a chance to take a shot at the religious Zionists and not dealing with the fact that currently and for the past decades, it's been the ultra-Orthodox that have had control over every religious ritual and life cycle event of all of the Jews in this country. And if we're going to talk because about people controls, who are forced... controls the chief rabbinate, which has a monopoly over all these there life are, cycles. There are currently, until the next elections, 16 MKs, of which two parties, Ashkenaz and Sfar, UTJ and Shas, which don't allow women to be represented, okay? So they are taking their religious views that women can't rep be represented, which, by the way, it's not Jewish law. Okay, he's going to say it is, but it's not. Um, that women can't represent themselves and be, in, and be in a position of, of influence, and they have no women there. They don't go to the committee, the committees for women's health, for women's domestic violence, and, it, and their community suffers. So if there's anyone that's actually forcing their values that are supposed to be Jewish values onto people, it's the ultra-Orthodox, and it's not, you know, I, I don't agree with Smotrich, I don't agree with the things that they're saying, and I feel like I don't have a party as a religious Zionist, to be honest with you, but I think his characterization is, is completely off, and if we're going to talk about control of Jewish law over people, it most certainly has to be discussed in, in the context of the ultra-Orthodox. Rabbi Hamazal, that is a fair assessment to say that, well, the national Religious want to move to a total halachic state. Israel already does have a system in which the ultra orthodox controlled chief rabbinate has a monopoly over many aspects of people's lives, and that is incompatible with democracy. No, it's not. It's not. It's not. Why? Why it's not? Because the orthodox here in Israel are the majority. 
Let us you come. Let us bring. Let us bring. No, 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 no. That, that, that is sti- no, that is not statistically true. Under, you, you under said any it before. measure, no. Under In any under any measure, at least sixty percent of Israelis define themselves as being either secular or traditionalist. Secular? The Orthodox, no. and certainly the ultra Orthodox, are no, not no, a majority. They, they are traditional. They are secular, but traditional. Most of the state, like all the right wing, they are traditional. But most all of the Israeli Likud public, is traditional. Most, most of, the, of them. And these traditional people liber- still support Let us bring the liberals. The ultra orthodox do not allow people to have. No, let, you know, you have three million liberals in the state, Jewish people. Where are they? Why they are not coming here? Let them come here. They will be the majority. So we, we will not we will not have an orthodoxy orthodoxy you know rule here. But we are. It's, it, here. Why they have been, they feel why un- completely disrespected here? No, yes, no. yeah, yes. I'm telling you, yes. If, I'm American, because, and because, I know what's going because on. Because in this debate of liberal and orthodox. When I am the majority here, I will do whatever. You are not the majority I, here. And even I if you are, the, you are not. I am. But even if You're you were, you have to be the majority. What do you mean by liberals? 10%. Reforms, conservatives. How many? 10%. You know, the, okay, I think we can conclude this by saying no, the ultra orthodox are not a majority in Israel, and the orthodox are neither. Rabbi Habeltal Shoshana, thank you very much. We have to move on.